chapter 6 verse 5 and 6 says when you pray not if you pray when you pray sad to say most Christians pray when they're in trouble but that's not what God intended when you pray you shall not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to the Father who is in the secret place. And your heavenly Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. For what? For praying. Ladies, not for complaining, for praying. Don't want to talk about the men because they might put me to the ground. Let me move on. God rewards praying people. Isaiah 37, 21, 33 through 35. Listen. Then Isaiah the son of Amos sent to Hezekiah saying, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, because you have prayed to me. God saw it. God was thrilled. He sent word to Hezekiah and said, because you have prayed to me. In other words, he had a choice. He could have gone to some witch doctor. He could have tried to fix things himself. But instead he prayed and God says, because you prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city. Listen, the Assyrian empire was coming against the tiny little nation of Israel like sand on the seashore. They were going to devour them and leave them nothing. But thank God. Hezekiah knew how to pray. He humbled himself before God. God saw it, was grateful to hear his prayer. And God turned the enemy away. And the Bible says, in the night when everybody was fast asleep, God sent one angel and killed 185,000 of the enemy. One angel. Why? Because King Hezekiah prayed. We're talking about the way to a blessed life. The opposite is also true. In 2 Kings 1.16, listen. Then he said to him, thus says the Lord. God sees everything. Are you aware of that? God sees everything. Thus says the Lord, because you have sent messengers to inquire of Baal Zabub. That's the devil. The God of Ekron, is it because there is no God in Israel to inquire of his word? God got mad. Why would you go down to the devil's workshop to ask for help when the God of Israel is here? He says, because you went down there, you will not come up from your bed. You shall die. And if you continue to read, he died. Why? He was a child of God, an Israelite, and he failed to pray. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 7 is one of my beloved scriptures in the Bible. Listen. What are the nation? You have the Muslim nation, the Hindu nation, the Chinese nation. Buddha nation. What other nation? All kinds of nations out there. The Russian nation. Give me another nation. The what? The what? If you're going to say it, please say it. The Korean nation. The African nation. All kinds of nations. But listen carefully, please. What other nation, name them all with all their gods. What other nation, great 
or small has God among them. Do you know that the Muslims never heard from their God once? They call him Allah, Bala, Matlala. Sorry. Listen. They never once heard from their God. Do you know that Hindus never hear from their God? Do you know that Buddhists never hear from their God? What other nation is there whose God is among them as the Lord our God is here among us whenever we call upon Him? No other nation. Aren't you glad you're a Christian? The Christian nation around the world is the only nation whose God shows up in prayer. Psalms 33 and verse 12. Blessed and prosperous is that nation whose God, who has God as their Lord. Blessed is that nation. Look at nations that does not have Almighty God as their God. They're ruthless, they're brutal, they're murderers, they're sick, they're poor, they're dying because only this God, the God of Christians are the ones whose God is the God of love, the God of mercy, the God of grace, the God who hears, the God who heals, the God who delivers, the God who provides, the God who blesses. We're talking today about the way to a blessed life. Let's get back to our theme scripture. Matthew 6, 5 and 6 says, When you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. Do you know that you can actually be a hypocrite when you pray? That's for another time and another place. But we don't want to be hypocrites when we pray. Verse 6 says, But... When you pray, go into your room and when you've shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. For your Father. For your Father. Do you know? All through the ages before Jesus, when there was just Judaism, which Christianity came out of. Never once in Judaism was God called a father. He was called Elohim. He was called Jehovah. He was called El Shaddai. He was called Jehovah Jireh. He was called all kinds of biblical name. But never ever your father. Jesus came, took away the wall of sin that separated his people from God, put us in the family of God, and now says to us, God is not just Elohim, he is not just El Shaddai, he is not just Jehovah, he is now your father, he is now your daddy. Do you know how big that is? Well, take for instance. If you are my friend, you are entitled to certain goodness and kindness from me. However, I would never, and I say this lovingly, don't shoot me. I would never treat you the way I would treat my own blood son and daughter. I am their dad. Everybody in the world that is not yet born again, God gives them certain blessings in their lives. But Christians who have repented of their sins, God takes in personally and says to them, I am now your daddy. You have all rights to everything that I am. Ask any other religion to confess that they can't. 
Jesus bought us the right for God to become our heavenly father and for us to become his children. So Jesus said, for your father knows the things you need before you ask him. Don't answer if you closely observe. Most of our prayers is about me, me, me and give me some more me and me. Every time we bend our knees and when the tears are falling, it's about us, me. And, and what, what, what in the world are we praying to God about? What, are, what in the world are we praying to the Father about? Can I answer that for you? I weren't, I weren't with you when you had your knees beside the bed praying. But I can tell you what you're praying for. Can I tell you? Are you sure you want to hear? It won't be a secret anymore. Simple. You're praying for stuff that your heavenly father already knows you need. And you're still praying for it. And yet the Bible says he knows that you need it. And then he says, I am your father and I know that you need it. But let me just watch you suffer for a little bit. And then you say, well, let me pray. God, I need this, I need that, I need the other. And you wear yourself out crying over the same thing all the time. But the Bible says, I know that you need it. So Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. He didn't give them the words, but he gave them a pattern, an outline. He says, firstly, your daddy already sees your needs. He knows them. So quit crying over the same thing again and again. Think about you. You have a son, you have a daughter, and if you don't, maybe you should get one. But if you have a child, if you have a son or if you have a daughter, would you see your, cry, your, 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 your son or your daughter crying to death, asking you for something, knowing you have it and you don't give them? I'd put you in prison and throw away the key. Because that's not how we are. Jesus said, first of all, God is no longer just your creator. He is now your daddy, your papa, your father. He says also, quit praying about the same things over and over. He already knows that you need, that, that you need them. He says, in this manner, therefore, pray our father. Never forget it. No Jew. Not even a Jew fish. No Jew has ever known God as father. None. Christians have the privilege of knowing almighty God as father. He says your father knows. He says therefore pray in this manner. Let's quickly run through the pattern that Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. He says when you pray say hallowed be your Name, the best way to ever start to pray is to glorify God's name. Is to praise Him, to worship Him, to adore Him. Quit the nonsense of bending your knees crying, Oh Lord, I need a job. Oh Lord, I need this, I need that. Jesus said when you open your mouth to pray, praise the Lord. Give Him glory for who He is. Listen to what Psalms 86 verse 8 through 10 says. Among the gods, remember no other nation? Among the gods out there, it says there is none like you. O Lord, nor are there any works like your works. All nations whom you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. Listen, for you are great and do wondrous things. You alone, everybody shout alone. alone. You alone, my Father, your Father, the Heavenly Father of Christians, you alone are God. Jesus said, if you're going to pray, then pray the right way. Open up and praise your Father for who He is, one of a kind. He continues. 
He says, after you've praised him, then say, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Do you know a lot of times we try praying hard. And when I say hard, hard, we pray hard for God to do our will. Think about it. Just be silent for a moment and let your mind go back to some of your prayers. We pray hard and strong, even with alligator tears falling down. Lord, do this, please. You know how loving and merciful and wise God is? If God would give us some of the things we're praying for, even though we think we need them, we would kill ourselves. So Jesus said after you praise the Father for who He is, He says then invite His will and His kingdom to earth in your life. Let it be what He wants and not what you want. But there's something else behind that. And I want to show you. In Psalms 115 and verse 16, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. The heavens belong to God. That's why Lucifer was thrown down. Get out of here, Baba. The heavens belongs to the Lord. But listen, the earth, where are you, on Jupiter or stupider? We are on earth. We are on earth. Are you on earth? You better come down to earth if you're not there yet. The Bible says the earth belongs or it has been given to the children of men. Has anybody ever taught you that God can see you dying and will do nothing if you do not invite him into the realm of the earth? When God created the earth, he gave it to Adam and Eve. He was no longer the rightful owner. He now needs permission to come and do what you need him to do. If you do not pray, God can watch your dire situation and do nothing about it. Jesus said when you pray, tell him, Father, let your kingdom come and your will be done. Can I prove it to you? Are you willing to give me a hundred dollar to prove it? Is it going to be in pesos or mesos? Watch this, Daniel chapter 9, verse 22 and 23. And the angel Gabriel said to me, Daniel, in the lion's den, I am here to help you understand God's plan. Now listen, word for word, listen carefully. The angel showed up. He says, I'm here to help you understand God's plan. The moment you began praying, the moment you began praying, not before, the moment you began praying, a command was given from the Father and I am here to tell you what it was. God saw Daniel. He saw the Israelites in Babylon in captivity. And they were suffering and God could do nothing about it. Do you know when God sent the angel? When Daniel prayed. Jesus said when you pray, say, let your kingdom come and let your will be done. God cannot bring his kingdom and will in your midst if you do not give him permission. I know it sounds ridiculous. But that's because religion has taught us a lot of C-R-O-P in capital letters. Really? If you have trouble in your marriage, God can watch it and you can slap each other upside down. And God will do nothing about it. Until you say, Father, please come and help us. He needs your permission. That's why Jesus told his disciples, here is how you pray. God can see you broke, busted, and disgusted. And will do nothing about it. Until you invite him to come into your financial situation. God can see you dying with sickness and will do nothing about it. Until you say, Father, let your kingdom come. And your will be done in this body of mine. He needs permission. He needs your permission. He has given you the right to this earth. And he can no longer do what he wants to do unless you invite him to come and do it. That's why prayerless people are hopeless people. 
He continues, give us daily casa pan dulce. Give us this day our daily bread. But when we pray, God, give me bread for 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, right up to 30. I just don't want to sweat and worry. Jesus said, when you pray, Lord, give me my daily bread. In other words, I'm here today. Give me the bread I will need for tomorrow today. But, but we want to see all the way down yonder. And there is where the trouble comes in. Do you see God as your source? Listen, you free up yourself. You free up yourself when you see God as your source. Jesus said, know that God, your Father, is your provider. He is your supplier. He is your source. Listen to Matthew 6, 11. We acknowledge you as our provider of all that we need. When you pray for God to meet your needs, you are acknowledging that you have a heavenly Father who loves you and you know that He will provide your need. Your job is not your source and some of us have learned that the hard way. Your boss is not God. Your heavenly Father is God. Your job is a means that the Lord uses to provide for you. But your trust is not in that. Your trust is in your heavenly daddy. Genesis twenty two fourteen. Abraham named the place. God provides. Jehovah Jireh. And listen though what it says. And it, is sti it still goes by that name to this day. What happened here? God told Abraham to give his only son from his wife. As a sacrifice on the altar. God was testing him. And Abraham was willing to do it. And just before the dagger, the sword, the knife came down upon Isaac. The angel said, stop. Now I know that you trust me. And the Bible says Abraham gazed on the side and when he gazed to the side he saw a lamb that God provided out of nowhere and Abraham took it and sacrificed it he called God Jehovah Jireh the Lord who provides Jesus said give us our daily bread brothers and sisters we must come to the place where we trust him he never fails Trust Him. Be, and you know when you can trust Him. Because when you, when, when you can trust God with your money, with your job, with, with, with what you earn, you're willing to tithe, you're willing to give, you're willing to sow seeds, because you know that He is your source. He continues. We're talking about the way to a blessed life. Don't think that rich people are blessed. Now, this is not across the board. I know some very wealthy millionaires that are blessed in every way because they know Jesus, have given their lives to Jesus. But people who are rich and do not know the Heavenly Father or Jesus Christ are some of the most miserable people you can find. And I am not judging and condemning. I have interacted with millionaires who have not surrendered to Jesus. And their lives are in a wreck. So when I talk about living or the way to a blessed life, I'm not talking just about money. Money is just a little piece of it. We're talking about your whole life being blessed by God. Everything works. Your health works. Your relationship works. Your money works. Your children work. Everything works well. Listen, it says, do you know of any parent who would give his hungry child who asked for food a plate of rocks instead? What an ignorant, foolish dad that would be. It says, oh, when asked for a piece of fish, what parent would offer his child a snake instead? If you 
imperfect as you are, know how to lovingly take care of your children and give them what's best. Listen, how much more ready is your, listen, it didn't say Jehovah Jireh. It didn't say Elohim. It says how much more your heavenly father. You have a father that loves you, that has taken the responsibility closely for your life. It says, how much more ready is your heavenly father to give wonderful gifts to those who ask him? Don't see him as God. See him as your father. Jesus said, praise him. Invite his kingdom to come. Tell him, give me my daily bread, Lord. Because he is willing. In other words, he creates opportunities. God I know you will provide my needs physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, materially, relationally, in every way. When, when you are able to do what Jesus said, pray to him and say, God, give me my daily bread. You're saying to your father, Lord, I know in all these ways you're going to provide for me. You will not forsake me. You will not leave me abandoned. I, I won't have to try to survive. God, you are my source in every good thing that I need in this life. Give us our daily bread. And then he continues, Jesus said, when you pray... Forgive us our debts as we forgive. Have you ever fallen short before, before God? Yes? Have you ever made some mistakes? Sometimes the biggest mistakes we make is with the boca sucio. Really? Because I don't think we would go and actually commit these big horrendous sins again. But we do sin before God every single day. Why? Because we're st we still have a human nature that we, we have not yet learned to fully control. So Jesus said when you pray to your heavenly father. He says offer forgiveness. So that your heavenly father can forgive you. And it's easier to receive the forgiveness of God than to offer the forgiveness of God. True or false? Yes. When we fail, when we fall short, we enjoy the forgiveness of God. Thank you, Jesus. But then when somebody falls short in our life, it's difficult, especially if they hurt us deeply. It's hard to offer forgiveness. Jesus said when you pray, when you address your heavenly father, you better make up your mind and be ready to forgive unless your father won't forgive you. Look at this in Matthew 6, 14 and 15. It says, and when you pray, make sure you forgive the faults of others so that your father in heaven will also forgive you. So indirectly it's implying if you don't forgive, no matter how much you ask for forgiveness, you will not be forgiven by God. You must offer forgiveness. Are you listening to me? This is a big thing right here because all the time we offend each other. We must be willing to forgive. If we do not forgive, things go sour. Listen to what the Bible says. It says, so if you're standing before the altar in the temple offering a sacrifice to God. And suddenly remember that a friend has something against you. It says, leave your sacrifice there beside the altar. Go and make peace. This came from the lips of Jesus. You would not believe how we can put on a facade. How we can put on a mask. Well tinted and painted. We look like saints. But what about what's happening out there on the job in the home? Are we at peace? Are we Getting to terms with each other. Are we forgiving each other? Are we kind to each other? Jesus said, I'm just telling you, by the way, that you can have the nicest words to approach your heavenly father. But if you can't forgive, let me just tell you, your nice words goes like this. Woo! 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 Not even reach above your head. He says, learn to forgive. You know what the Bible... 
does anybody know what the golden rule is in the Bible? What about the silver? Just give me the brass. Neither? The golden rule in the Bible is this. Do unto others what you want them do unto you. In other words, take the first step. Don't wait for somebody to do to you what you want them to do. Then you're going to do it. You do first, then the other will do. That's the golden rule. Now, what is the silver rule? When you find out, you tell me. Leave your sacrifice there beside the altar. Go and make peace. Jesus said, when you pray. You see how important prayer is for us to be wasting time telling God the needs we have over and over and over and over again and nothing happens? Jesus said, your daddy already knows. Get over the baby stage and deal with the bigger issues. He says, learn to forgive and you will be forgiven. It goes deeper than that. Watch this. 1 Peter 3.7 in the same way, you husbands. Do we have husbands in here? Don't raise your hand. Husbands. The address is not to the wife. Ladies, you are free. Leave me an offering before you leave. You are free. This is for the men, the husbands. It says in the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives. If you have married the woman, you chose her. Remember that? And if she has become what you didn't want her to be, you made her that way. Treat your wife with understanding. Can I give you one clue about women? Men, can I give you one clue about women? The Bible says treat your wife with understanding. You know why? They don't understand themselves. How will you understand them? You understand the battle that you're facing? So it says, be kind to them. They haven't figured it out for themselves. How will you figure it out? Okay. It says, treat your wife with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner. So much for make my coffee, spread my bed, make my food, do this, do that, because I'm the head of the home. Says who? The Bible says she is your equal partner. Treat her that way. Then I like this, what it says. Treat her as you should sow your prayers. Men, fathers. Husbands, so your prayers will not be hindered. When you treat your wife like a piece of cloth, your prayers goes like this. And you're trying to let it hit heaven, but it just curves right down. And the devil sees it and says, yeah. I didn't hear that one. What was the laughter about? Listen. Jesus said we must forgive when we pray. Therefore, husbands, it's important that you forgive your wife. All the time. Every time. If not, it doesn't matter how eloquent you are in prayers. Your prayer goes nowhere. Jesus continues by saying, you can take off your seatbelt, the... Turbulence is over. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Nobody can deliver us from the evil one but Jesus Christ. He is the only deliverer. He'll protect you. He'll keep you. Jesus said, pray to your father. You see, you don't know this and I don't know this for sure, but I can almost bet you a thousand percent. Every day when you get your foot off that bed, the devil already has plans to destroy you for that day. Yeah. You have all your great plans and everything will go sweet like sugar cane. Then you find out middle of the day something went terribly wrong. That's because the, de and the terribly wrong happened, but what he intended to do was to kill you. 
but he failed. So Jesus said, when you pray, tell your daddy, Father, I can't see this ugly duckling, but I pray deliver me from him this day. Keep him from succeeding in my life. First Corinthians 10, 13 says, we all experience times of testings. True or false? Which is normal, by the way, for every human being. But God will be faithful to you. God will be faithful to you. He will screen and filter the severity, the nature and timing of every test or trial you face. When you're down and you feel, oh God, I won't make it this time. God says, come on, get over it. I already filtered it. I already made sure that the severity is not overwhelming. It says, so that you can bear up under it. And each test is an opportunity to trust Him more. Each test. Is an opportunity to trust him some more. Then he closes by saying. For yours is the kingdom. And the power. And the glory. Forever and ever. Yours is the kingdom father. Daddy. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. And yours is the glory. Forever. You see sometimes life can become so burdensome. So weighty. Sometimes the devil can attack so severe. We wonder who is in control and who is in charge. Jesus say, remind yourself every time you pray. Father, you're in control. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. And yours is the glory now and forever. It doesn't matter what doesn't look right, seem right, feel right. It doesn't matter how heavy the weight of the world seems. Father, you are in control. The power, the glory, and the kingdom is yours forever and ever. He happens to be your daddy, your heavenly father. So again, I close with what I started with. He says, when you pray, when you pray, he says, your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. When you pray, don't just pray when you have a need. Prayer is actually building a relationship with your heavenly father. Isn't it good to have a good relationship with your dad? True. For a lot of Belizeans, that's not really the way it is, but it would be good to have it that way. But it's so good when you can have a wonderful relationship with your dad. Well, I just need to let you know, you can have a wonderful relationship with your heavenly father. And how does it happen? Through prayer. The way to a blessed life is through prayer. Jesus said, when you give, your father will reward you. He says, when you pray, your heavenly Father will reward you. Too bad for other nations, religious nations. There's no reward for their prayer. I know of a certain religion that takes stone and stone it against the devil. Oh, the devil says, sure. We have a God who has become our heavenly Father. He hears, He answers. He has the responsibility. Listen, Kev, do you think God would jeopardize His character, His image, by not meeting your need? He can't put His name on the line. He has vowed that if you're His child, He will meet every one of your need when you learn to pray. Pray about it. Quit complaining. Quit using options. Give your situation one final thing. God must come true. Nothing else will. Would you stand with me? Prayer. Prayer. We'll close quickly in prayer. If there's anybody here you need prayer for anything at this very moment, come to the altar as we close in worship. 
And, and let's believe the Lord that our God is among us when we pray. You know, Sister, Sister Liz, when you talk, spoke about your granny that got healed, I didn't lay hands on her, right? She just came to the altar. Whatever need you have at this moment, you now know you have a heavenly father. It's not just God. You have a heavenly father. He already knows your needs. And we're just going to receive from him what you need today. Are some of you afraid of the altar? You don't want to come a little bit closer? I may have a big mouth, but I sure don't bite. Can't promise you my dog won't bite, but I don't. Listen carefully. Liz told me two days ago, I think it was at the end of the fasting feast we had in here. Liz reminded us that her granny from Salvador, is it? From Salvador came into this church. She's a Catholic, by the way. She came into this church and she troubled for years with shingles. And when I ask people to come forward for prayer, I didn't come and touch anybody. I just declared God's power and anointing over your situation. And she went back to Salvador shingles free. We have a heavenly father who loves us, who is able. So those of you at this altar tonight, what is your need? I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. What is your need? Take just a few seconds. Inaudibly. Just from your heart. Tell the Lord what your need is at this moment. And we are going to call God your father into this situation. You believe him, you believe that he loves you, you believe that he has the responsibility of meeting all your needs. You will walk from this altar with your needs met. Because he doesn't lie and he never fails. So take just a minute and tell the Lord from within you. Tell him what that need is and how you can't help yourself. But you know that he can and will help you right now. Precious Heavenly Father, oh, how delighted we are. How delighted we are and how privileged we feel to know that no one in the past before Jesus could have called you Heavenly Father. None had a relationship so personal with you that they could call you Heavenly Father. And yet because of Jesus, our Savior, Master and Lord, we now have you as our Daddy, as our Father. As our source, meeting every need we have. And Lord, we approach you that way today. We know that we are your children and that you are our Father. And we come to you because of what Jesus did. Lord, you already know the needs of each person at this altar tonight. You've been wanting to meet this need forever. And tonight they're giving you the opportunity. And so I join my faith with theirs right now. Lord, you said if two of us shall come in agreement as touching anything, it shall be done. We thank you in advance that each individual need presented at this altar tonight is being resolved in the mighty name of Jesus. Each need. Those of you around the world and around Belize, each need as you give it to your heavenly father right now. Not because of who you are, because you don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. It's because of the blood that Jesus shed that you can have it so freely and willingly. Father, in the name of Jesus, take the burdens, take the trials, the troubles, take the endless fight, take the sickness, the lack, the disease, the doubt, the fear, the problems within the relationships, the problem within the family, 
whatever the need is. Now, Lord, Father, we thank you that because of Jesus, we lay this issue at the altar and we receive our breakthrough and miracle now in the mighty name of Jesus. And every devil that was assigned to your life, giving life to this issue. I break it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, send your angels now to each life and get the devil out of their lives, Lord, and bring them the freedom and the blessing now in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare master because of who you are. That your people will walk out of here tonight completely relieved of whatever it was they had in their body or in their life. I declare it done in the mighty name of Jesus and everybody said. Let's go back to our seats and close in a few songs of worship. Song of ages to the